but this is our last uh, learning outcome where we're going to be talking about the anatomy of the eye. So the eye has um, several different layers and we can go from um, the outside in. So the white part of your eye is called the sclera, which is this structure right over here. Then we're going to have the choroid, which is this inner structure right over here. The most internal layer is the retina. Okay, so we go from sclera to choroid to retina. Over here in the front, we're going to have the cornea, which is a continuation of the sclera. Then we're going to have another structure here that's called the iris. And the iris is going to be made up of a muscle that's going to contract and control the amount of light that goes in. And the light goes in through this other structure that's called the pupil. Okay, so the iris is the muscle that controls the amount of light that goes in. So the lighter the environment is, the smaller the pupil will be. And the darker, the larger the pupil. Around the iris, we're going to have this continuation of muscles here that's called ciliary body. Right over here. And then we're going to have a couple of compartments. So we have um, two major compartments. We have what we call an anterior cavity. And then we have on the back a posterior cavity. A posterior cavity. Okay. Now the anterior cavity is filled with a liquid that's called aqueous humor. And the posterior cavity is filled with a liquid that's called vitreous body. Now the vitreous body is more viscous than the aqueous humor, so it's thicker. Another thing that we can talk about on this figure is that the anterior cavity is going to have two um, compartments within it. So it's going to have a, what we call a posterior chamber over here and an anterior chamber. And the posterior chamber and anterior chamber is going to be divided over here by the ciliary body and the iris. But through both of these compartments, we're going to have aqueous humor circulating through it. So these are the main structures that we need to talk about. <clears throat> Maybe one more structure. The suspensory ligaments, which are present right over here. They're basically going to hold the lens. So the lens it's what's going to be shaped through the suspensory ligaments to focus objects that are either close or far away. And the older you get, the less flexible these suspensory ligaments are. So that's why after a while you need glasses because your suspensory ligaments can't stretch enough your lens to adjust to the different depths that you have to see. Okay. So 
so how is the light going to pass through? So basically it's going to pass initially through the cornea, then through your anterior chamber, passes through the pupil, through the lens, then it goes all the way to the back of the retina. Once it reaches the retina, it activates your nerve, which is your yellow part, and it leaves through your optic nerve over here. And now you guys should be thinking, where does it go to? So it goes all the way to your occipital lobe, where your visual cortex is. So it goes all the way to the back, where the information is going to be processed. Now within your optic nerve, we're going to have a structure here that's called an optic disc, where all your optic nerves sort of merge together, and it sort of forms like a little depression. In the middle, you're going to have a central retinal artery and vein that's going to sort of take all the blood vessels that supply oxygen and remove waste from your eye through the central structure of your optic nerve. Another structure that we should talk about is your fovea, right over here. The fovea is the area where you're going to concentrate your um, have a concentration of most of your cones and cones we're going to see later on are the structures that allow us to see things in color okay so your fovea has the highest concentration of cones so if we compare the fovea to your optic disc which is back here, your optic discs are going, is going to have 0%, so no cones which detect color, or rods which detect um, black and white. So this is also known as your blind spot. Okay, so again, your optic disc has no cones or rods, and it's known as your blind spot. Where your fovea, if you have um, something that you're looking at and it's concentrating right over here on the fovea, so this little dot right over here, here is where you're able to see the best um, things that are in color, because here's where you have the most concentration of cones. This is just showing you um, how the retina is going to be organized. So the light is going to come through here. Once it comes through here, it goes all the way back to the rods and cones. The rods are going to be uh, detecting black and white, and the cones is going to be detecting colored structure. From here, it's going to synapse with a few cells we have the bipolar cells and the amacrine cells present over here. But the one that I want you to know and remember is the last cell, which is your ganglion cells, which is actually the one that's going to come together and exit to form your optic nerve. And this is all that we need to know for the eyes right now. Um, because in the anterior cavity we have two chambers, the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber, the fluid, which is the aqueous humor, it has to circulate through these cavities. So the aqueous humor is going to be produced by the cells present here in the ciliary body. Therefore, it's going to 
have to travel over here to your anterior chamber. Once it travels to the anterior chamber, it gets collected over here through this little hole, which is your canal of Schlem. And it enters the canal of Schlem and comes back to the posterior chamber. So again, the aqueous humor is produced by the cells of your ciliary body. It's going to move to your anterior chamber over here through this opening of the pupil. And then it comes back to the posterior chamber through the canal of Schlem. Now what do you think would happen if you had this canal of Schlem blocked? So that's something that I want you to think about. Here's this, just to show you the action of the pupillary muscles where if they are going to contract, they're going to constrict the opening. If they're going to relax and dilate, they're going to make the opening bigger. So this is when you're in the dark and this is where you're in the light or bright. just to show you. So this is it for our lecture. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to send me an email.